Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to order to call to order this special town meeting. Today is December 8th, 2020. The time is 7.09. At 6.56, we had a quorum of 87 people present. The tellers have been sworn, and the tellers are Paul Armstrong, Paul Basler, and Dave Kennedy. The warrant having been previously declared and properly noticed with the constable's return of service. As tradition dictates, we waive, the, we waive the reading of the warrant. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. For people just arriving, there are more chairs being placed out for you momentarily. At this time, I'd like to take a moment of silence for all those who have passed and for all those uh, residents of Kingston uh, to continue to find the strength, resilience, and courage to endure through these unprecedented times. Rules for town meeting. Town meeting is run per town meeting time and our local bylaws. If you wish to address town meeting, step up to the microphone, wait to be recognized, and state your name and address. There's microphones at the front stage right and at the front stage left. Those microphones uh, pick up sound. You do not touch them. Um, please, when approaching the microphone, maintain social distancing. Um, when at the microphone, please keep your comments to under two minutes, and you may approach the microphone a second time, but with only new information. Please keep this additional new information to under one minute. I will explain procedures as needed and will recognize requests for points of order. Motions to amend may be made, but must be reduced to writing prior to being debated. Questions of privilege raises issues affecting rights and privileges at town meeting. If your safety, dignity, or integrity, if the volume, temperature, noise, interfere with your ability to hear, speak, or participate in town meeting, please yell out question of privilege. Please remain seated unless you are trying to speak at the microphone. Please do not move chairs and take conversations outside. Please keep your mask on at all times while at town meeting. I hope to continue to have a spirited debate and that this meeting both supports and challenges the issues that, have, that are presented. You may make a motion to call a question, but you cannot debate, then make the motion. Please be respectful to everyone, and remember, it's okay to have a different opinion. Does everyone understand the rules? Can everyone hear me? The exits, please take this time to look around the room to, to see where the, you look, the closest exits are. They're in the back, they're also on the sides and in the rear. The bathrooms are located as you walk through the door to the right. And how the room is set up, there's markings on the floor. So if you could follow those markings when going to the microphone, either it's the microphone over here or the microphone on this side. When you're at the microphone, it's important to stand on the X so the microphone can pick up your sound after you're recognized. When done speaking at the microphone, please follow the arrows towards the center of the stage and back up the middle back to your seat. Um, there are a few announcements I'd like to make. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to welcome our new town administrator, Keith Hickey. Is Mr. Hickey... He's in the back and he's waving to us. Um, congratulations, and we... I'd, I'd also like to announce that there is an opening on the Finance Committee. Uh, if anyone's interested in that, please um, 
send uh, a letter of interest to Gloria or you can email me on the town website. And I believe um, someone from the school committee, Mr. Crone, has an announcement he'd like to make, so please, sir. Thank you, uh, Crone, uh, 43 Longwood Circle. I'm the vice chair of the Silver Lake Regional School Committee. Um, I just wanted to announce that Laura Tilton actually resigned from the school committee last week. Um, she gave us four years of, of a lot of service. She was a very analytical person and, and added a lot to the school committee over the past four years, so we're going to miss her. Uh, there is an opening now. Um, she was recently elected to a three-year term, so what we need is, um, if anybody is interested in serving on the committee, we need them to fill out a letter of interest and submit to um, the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen and the Kingston members of the Silver Lake Regional School Committee will review the applicants and then make an appointment. So we're asking folks to send an email with a letter of interest to um, Tricia Tucker, and her email is ptucker at kingstonmass.org by December 22nd at noon, and that evening we will be meeting the Board of Selectmen and the, Kingston School, and the Silver Lake School Committee to appoint that person. So um, if anybody has questions about what's involved with being on the uh, Regional School Committee, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is on the um, Kingston uh, website as well as the Silver Lake uh, website. Thank you. Thank you. And with the open in motion, Ms. Semberg. There you go. Move that the following non-residents and non-registered voters be allowed to enter and address town meeting. Kate Federoff, town council. Matthew Darsh, water department superintendent. Jason Silva, building commissioner, zoning enforcement officer. Carol McCoy, town accountant. Meredith Rafiki, assistant assessor. Mary Guiney, conservation agent. Paula rossi Clapp, director of elder affairs. Robert Downey, town planner. Marie Grossman, IT manager. Matthew Durkee, Silver Lake School Facilities Director. Tina Betty, Human Resources Manager. Gloria Mitchell, Interim Town Administrator. Mike Ohl, CEI Incorporated, Engineer for the Water Department. Kristen Berger, Resilient CE, OPM for Water Project. All those in, any debate? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Motion. Do you have another motion? Yes. Move to take articles 10, 11, and 7 out of order to present them first, and then go forward in order, starting with Article 1 as presented in the warrant. And just so we're clear, that's Articles 10, 11, and 7. Is that the order you'd like to take them? Yes. And I have a second. Any debate? Would you like to be heard on your reasons? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries with minimal opposition. So we'll be starting with Article uh, 10. Move that the town appropriate $1,470,290 to pay the cost of constructing and equipping the Grassy Hole Manganese Removal Plant and purchasing and installing an additional filter for the tr Trackle Pond Manganese Treatment Facility and for payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen is authorized to borrow this amount under pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 8, chap, uh, Paragraph 4, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes to the town there, therefore. All or any portion of the amount authorized to be borrowed by this vote may be borrowed through the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. And any appropriation 
appropriate official or officials of the town are hereby authorized to execute any agreement with the trust and the Department of Environmental Protection of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that may be required in connection with any such loans obtained through the trust. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, less any premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the amount authorized to be borrowed and to pay for such costs by a like amount. Okay, when you came into the hall, you got a piece of paper. We kept it on one side of one piece of paper that explains why we needed to do this. When we came before you, um, I think it was last year, it was near unanimous approval. And the explanation on why we got to come back before you was on that piece of paper. The bottom line is, and I'll give you the Reader's Digest version, is the, ta the tariff on steel substantially raised the cost of constructing a, a building that has an awful lot of steel in it. The uh, prevailing wage has gone up faster than the rate of inflation. And because of COVID, bidders were reluctant to not include some kind of a cushion in the event that there is a, a delay in getting supplies and so on. So the bottom line is the cost of building a manganese treatment plant went up substantially. The explanation that you have in front of you is a good explanation for it. I don't think it's necessary to spend a lot of time going over this. I will answer any questions you have. If you need something clarified, that's terrific. Raise your hand, I'm happy to clarify it. But we've got a lot of items tonight, and I don't think this is a, I think this is a no brainer, quite frankly. Just the word such premium. Um, again, friendly amendment, less any such premium. I, I really couldn't hear you, but yep. yeah. I you got it. Yes. Yes. It's just adding one word. The I'll open this up for debate. Seeing none, I'll move the question. This is a uh, two thirds vote, favorable by the Board of Selectmen, 5 0 0. Favorable by the Finance Committee, 4 0 0. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, I have an amended motion for uh, Article 11. It's going to read a little bit different than the one that's in your book. Move that the well, town transfer 200. She said 10, 11, 7. No, go ahead. What's up? that the town transfer $248,000 from Article 9 of the 2018 Special Town Meeting for the design and permitting of the manganese plant at Grassy Hole for the purpose of constructing and equipping the Grassy Hole manganese removal plant and purchasing and installing an additional filter for the Chocolate Pond manganese treatment facility and for the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto. Do I have a second? This is simply a, a way of transferring money that we had originally had got appropriated for design and treatment, uh, for the treatment plant rather. Um, since we are using substantially the same design that we had for the um, Chaco Pond treatment plant, there's the modifications are only necessary for the site that we're on. So the cost of, the, of uh, design has been substantially reduced. So we'd like to transfer what's left of, from that account to help pay for the treatment plant. Oh. A second. Open for debate. Seeing none, I'll move the question. This is a majority vote. Um, it says two thirds, but it's a majority just because it's the uh, transfer of funds. Um, and it was favorable uh, by the Board of Selectmen, 500. Favorable Finance Committee, 400. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Next article is article number seven. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Um, move that the sum of one hundred twenty-three thousand nine hundred ninety-two dollars and twenty-five cents be appropriated for the following ca capital expenditures and to meet this appropriation the sum of 
$992.25 be transferred from free cash and $65,000 be transferred from the Waterways Improvement Fund, said the said expenditures to be under the directions of the departments named below. The first project is for three cardiac um, monitors. Um, it's for the fire department. They're nine years old, going on 10. They're pretty much end of life. We can't find parts uh, for these, uh, for the products. And um, on page 11 on the additional handout, it gives you all the, all the reasons, some of the other reasons why as well. Uh, the second project is due to a storm that happened in August uh, of this year, and uh, the Harbor Master is just looking to use the funds, the 65000 that's in there, that, that's in their fund. We just have to, at, at town meeting, we have to approve them to actually use the funds. I'll hear you. Any questions? I'll open it for debate. Anybody? Seeing none. This is the majority vote. It's been um, voted on and approved by the. Why am I missing it? Oh, there we go. Um, as to the um, project number one. It was approved by the Board of Selectmen, 500, approved by Finance Committee, 400, approved by Capital Planning, 400. Same with project number two, 500, Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee, 400, Capital Planning, 400. All those in favor of passage of this article, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Article, motion carries. Thank no you. opposition. Returning to number one. Move that the town appropriate the sum of $158,628 to supplement the appropriations to FY 2021 operating budgets to the following accounts, and to meet this appropriation that the sum of $128,128 be raised and appropriated. The sum of $12,500 be transferred from unused Article 7 of Special Town Meeting held on November 12, 2019 for the Plymouth County Grant Writer, account 1, sorry, account 01122-72522, be transferred from Board of Health Food Inspector Stipend, account 01510-51139, and the sum of $12,000 from free cash, and to authorize the town accountant to allocate such sums to the appropriate operating budgets. From account 01122-72522, Article 7, Special Town Meeting, November 2019, Plymouth County Grant Writer, $12,500. Account 01510511, sorry, let me start that one. From account 01510-51139, Board of Health Food Inspector, $6,000. Raise and appropriate $128,128. Free cash, $12,000 for a total of $158,628. Two, account 01510-51112, Board of Health, Wage and Personnel, $50,000. Account 01610-51112, Library, Wage and Personnel, $42,206. <clears throat> Account 01610-51113, Library Clerical Union, $22,550. Account 01163-51112, Election and Registration, Wage and Personnel, 
Account 01163-51131, Election and Registration Overtime, $6,000. Account 01163-52342, Election and Registration Postage, $3,000. Account 01163-54421, Election and Registration Supplies, $500. Account 01163-54491, Election and Registration Food, $500. Account 01541-51112, Council on Aging, Wage and Personnel, Cook, $6,219. Account 01195-52252, Facilities, Contract Services, Mowing, $21,403. Account 01155-52270, IT software licenses, $1,250. Account 01155-52349, IT internet services, $3,000, for a total of $158,628. As you can see in the booklet and in the supplemental documents, this article funds items like expenses for the additional elections that took place earlier this year, as well as bringing back a number of items from our initial drafted budget now that the state has committed to level funding. Is that all? Open to debate. Mr. Basler. Mr. Moderator, I would like to make an amendment to this article, please. I have a move that the town raise and appropriate the sum of $25,200 to supplement an appropriations to the FY21 operating budget to the following account and to authorize the town account to allocate such funds to the appropriate operating budget. Account number 01422-51116, labor union salaries for the requested amount of $25,200. Mr. Moderator, uh, <clears throat> due to the COVID pandemic, we were told as department heads we were $1.2 million in the red. As a result of that, I lost an employee to a layoff in July. Uh, as of Friday, my foreman or the town's foreman for the last eight years is retiring, which means I will be down two, two town employees starting the winter season. As your highway department's superintendent for the last 20 years, every snowstorm is difficult with 100% of the staff that I have. Being down 20% brings in operational challenges. I'm requesting the $25,200 to bring back the laborer that was laid off in July. And that's money will pay his salary between now and June 30th. I look forward to this body's support. Any other debate as to the amendment? Seeing none, I'll move the question for a vote. To, this is to allow the amendment, to allow the 25,000 to be included in the motion for Article 1. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The amendment carries. Would you like to say anything else? Would you like to say anything else as to? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Did we have a green street? Can you just, Miss Stanford, can you just try to keep your voice up just a little bit more? What did he say? It's a little louder. Oh, Janet Stanford, 53 Evergreen Street. Still. My God. Janet Stanford, 53 Evergreen Street. Okay, um, I would like to remove the facilities contract services mowing. And the reason I'd like to Hold remove- Hold on, is, is, are you, so you're asking to make an amendment? I can't hear him. You're making an amendment? Yes, I'd like to make an amendment to remove that um, mowing. Did you have, can you write that out for me? Do you have it in writing? 
No, I forgot to. I'm sorry. Could adjourn. <laughs> that was for the mowing. Thank, thank you for that, Ms. Difford. I'll hear you. Do I have a second on that? Can everybody hear me? Okay. I, I have a motion to amend. All right, there we go. We have a second. Okay. I can, I'll hear you. Okay, so um, my understanding was that we... Um, I don't know if you want to call it subcontracted, but we hired other people to do the mowing, that the facilities people used to do it, but because they had to take care of some drains that hadn't been um, serviced for many years, they subcontracted it out. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but I just feel that at this point, the facilities um, people should take it over again, and we shouldn't have to pay um, extra money to have the lawns mowed. Thank you. Would, would anyone else want to be heard on the motion? Yeah. Yes, sir. Bradford Norman, 38 Summer Street. I'm also the facilities manager for the town. Um, first of all, the facilities department does not do the mowing. The highway department does the mowing. The selectmen and the highway department came last year uh, to town meeting in 2019 and started a pilot program where contract people come in and mow uh, 14 properties. The pilot program was to see if the, uh, it would work and if it was a good way to do the properties. Got to switch glasses. The pilot program uh, uh, was put into increased productivity by doing contract mowing, managing the entire process under facilities. I was asked to take it over. It is not under the facilities presently. And using the two CDL drivers at streets, trees, and parks to increase the productivity by scheduling the CDL drivers on the 3,000 street basin drains in the town. That's 3,000. Those need to be done every, uh, every year. It was also an effort to get all the attached properties, which I have 14, I can tell you what they are, mowed, weed whacked, backpack blown, to be removed, and each week consistently on the same day and also getting the basins done. Gray's Beach has been on this program, the only one totally on the program, the total year and a half, and it has never looked better. Um, I, I would recommend doing this and not putting it back to the highway department because we need the streets uh, basins done and uh, managing under the facilities department, the properties go with the buildings and uh, it is a very good way to do it. Thank you. Can you walk this way, sir? Follow the arrows, right? Right, follow the arrows. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, Mr. Moderator, during the process of the budget season two years ago, 
speaking with previous members of the Board of Selectmen and a previous town administrator, I asked for additional staff at the Highway Department. The challenges and the jobs that my department do every day are getting more and more. Uh, I, was a I asked for additional staff. I was told there's no way to do that. Well, you've got to come up with an idea. So I said, well, we need to take something off, this, off the plate of the Highway Department employees. Uh, from April till October, I have two employees that all they do five days a week is mow lawns, which it's, makes it look nice, but it's two employees five days from April till October. Like Mr. F Norman just stated, we have over 3,000 basins in town that previous to last year were not getting cleaned. DEP and our MS4 permit, and further in town meeting we'll be talking about the MS4 permit, uh, requires us to clean every basin every year. If not, we are subject to fines. So by leasing out or subbing out the mowing, it freed up two employees to go out on the vacuum truck to put truck the town purchased 13 years ago and start cleaning the basins. The employees, we've cleaned a lot of basins over the last 12, 13 months. Uh, once again, I was up at the beginning of this article by requesting that we get bodies back. We can't keep doing more and more with less and less employees. Uh, this, this lawn mowing pilot project, like I stated, was in lieu of me getting two guys, and we all understand the long-term financial impact employees of the town of Kingston have. Retirement, health, sick benefits. By subbing out the, the contract into the landscaping, we avoided those future costs. I, as a department head, facilities, the previous board and the previous town administrator thought it was a great idea, and the majority of the people in town meeting last year thought it was a great idea. I would hope that this, this body votes in favorable action on this to keep this in there so we can keep the parks and areas looking nice, keeping the streets safe, and avoiding uh, costly fines from DEP in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to be heard on the motion to remove? Oh, yes. Ms. Montford. <coughs> I'm loud anyways, can everybody hear me? Okay, as far as this specific article, we approved at town meeting $30,000 to get into a contract to lawn mow 14 properties I think we, we talked about. Well, right, right now we're talking about adding to that. So it wasn't $30,000 a year, so they're looking for an additional amount for the calendar year, actually for the fiscal year, excuse me. What we talked about was the need for this contract, and it was needed. We had storm drains that hadn't been cleaned for 20 years. We spent a lot of money on the machine that would clean the drains, and we did need dedicated people to do that. Paul, could you answer me? Are there 3,000 storm drains in Kingston? Yes, between, that's my estimate is 3,000 between sketch basins and manholes. Okay, how many storm drains did you get to in the 12 to 18 months? In the last 12 to 18 months, I say we got through about 2,300 of them. Okay, so it looks like it was a successful program for the part-time or temporary fix that we wanted it to be. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Secondarily, it's going to cost more money if we appropriate this money right now because then the next contract is only going to be, it's going up to $50,000. If we look at the amendment that Mr. Basler just put in, what he wants to do is put in an employee to replace one that was, re well, that well, was taken I, away. I, I hate to interrupt you. We're, we're not, we're, we're strictly on the amendment no, to, well, okay, I to, know, to I, remove. So I, we got we got to stay right to that. This is the amendment to remove the 24, uh, $21,403. Okay. Well, what I can say is that FinCom had the conversation about not putting it out to contract. If anybody watched our last FinCom meeting, Elaine Fiore got up and, and spoke to this issue and said it was a temporary program and it did make sense to get us back on track. We're back on track. As far as storm drains, once they're cleaned, Mr. Norman just told us that it has to be done every year. My understanding it's between five and ten. Could you clarify that for me, Mr. Basler? No, no, we're gonna we're not gonna have a question and answer session here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because it's a different. Yeah, we're, we're we're on to. Well, I want to get to the bottom of. You can come back up when we get to that one. We're just on to the amendment to remove the facilities contract. Okay. 
the conversation that we had at FinCom was we have an issue with the contract, with the mowing contract. And the conversation included personnel. So we farmed it out, and our concern is we can bring it back. So there are things that can be related today. I can't speak to that on this article. That's what I'm getting at. To bring, we don't agree with the contract going out. We did in the, actually, I don't even know if we voted on it in the past, but it served its purpose. It got us on track. Now we need to maintain those storm drains with the appropriate personnel, which is the segue into the amendment, but I won't talk to that. What I'll talk to is that contract to mow lawns, 14 properties. Right now, with this addition, you're bringing that contract up to $50,000 a year to farm it out. And there is a simple solution here with Mr. Basil's amendment, amendment, but what I'm speaking to you about is this contract for outside mowing. My, my thought is it has outlived its purpose. It did exactly what we wanted to do. Now we have the ability to bring it back in-house with the amendment that Mr. Basler is speaking to, and I would recommend the favorable removal of the lawn mowing contract from this article. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Bradford Norman Facilities Manager. Um, I just want to point out this is called the pilot program. Uh, if anyone knows what a pilot program is, that is a try to see how it works. If it works, we then move forward with it. This was not a temporary solution to a individual problem. It was a long-term solution to a long-term problem. Thank you. Seeing no further debate, I will move for a vote on the amendment to remove the uh, facilities contract service mowing uh, $21,403. So a, a positive vote will remove it, a negative vote will keep it as it is. So all those in favor of removing the 21000 say aye. aye. All those opposed? The amendment fails. Oh, back to Article 1. Does anyone want to be heard in debate on Article 1? Seeing none, I'll move the question. And this was, uh, Finance Committee, can you just state your position on um, Article 1? I don't have the vote. Sure, that's fine. Just, just the vote. We're just, just oh. what you, what the you guys took a vote. What was that? Zero four zero. Zero four zero. Okay. Selectman five zero. This is a majority vote. It was uh, Board of Selectmen favorable 500, uh, Finance Committee 040. All those in favor of passage of the vote say aye. aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries with little opposition. Article 2. For those in the back, there's uh, two front row seats up here, if anyone's interested. No takers? Mr. Arruda? Mr. Moderator. Come on. Yes, sir. Move that the town appropriate the sum of two thousand. A little louder, please. Can you just look up to the microphone? A little louder, please. Oh, sure. Move that the town appropriate the sum of two thousand five hundred and twenty-five dollars and fifty-nine cents for the purpose of paying outstanding bills from various town departments, and to meet this appropriation, the following sums be transferred, transferred as follows: 
Human Resources, Pre-Employment Physicals and Testing, amount $560, funding sources free cash. Police Department, Janitorial Services, $1,500, funding sources free cash. Uh, IT Department, Cell Phone Services, $245.45, funding sources free cash. Water Department, Supplies, $193.56, Funding sources, water retained earnings. And wastewater treatment is shipping costs $26.58, the wastewater retained earnings. Thank you. Folks, this article is obtaining invoices from prior years for services that have already been provided. Any debate on this one? We need a nine tenths on this one. It was favorable by the, uh, I'll move to a vote then. It's favorable by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0. Favorable by the Finance Committee, 4-0. Uh, um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing no opposition, I say the vote passes unanimously. Oh, hearing no. Article 4. Three. Sorry, yes, I'm sorry. You're ready. Article three, sorry. Article Article three. It's a wage and personnel article uh, to uh, amendments and compensation schedule. Move that the town amend wage and personnel bylaw, including the classification and the compensation schedule C and other textual changes as printed in the informational handout. If you, thank you. If you look at the uh, informational handout, there's um, two points. One is that we're raising the minimum wage to the state requirement as of January 1st, and the positions affected in the town do not affect the operating budget per Carroll. Um, we, uh, we've gone back and forth on that. And the second thing this article does is install a uh, table of contents into the wage and personnel bylaw so that if you're looking for something, it's just easier to find it. Any questions? Um, did we have any other debate? Can we have a second? I'll we'll move for a vote. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 4. Yes, unanimously. No, it's all you. Okay. Just identify yourself. Sorry? Just tell them who you are. Yes, sir. Chris Hoffman, 79 Main Street. I chair the Community Preservation Committee in Kingston. So we have, uh, we've moved two, uh, recommended two articles forward, or two projects forward for town meeting. I, I will read one at a time. Do the motion read the first. first. Read the motion for the Please. first one. Right, yes, sir. Okay. So these are gonna be uh, separate motions. So the first one, move that the sum of $15,500 be appropriated from available Community Preservation Act open space funds for the Mulligan's Landing Trail Improvement Project as presented at town meeting and recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. Said project to be under the supervision of the Town of Kingston Conservation Commission with all expenses subject to final review and approval by the Community Preservation Committee prior to submittal for payment. Second. If anybody needs any um, discussion on this, Jim Parker from Conservation is, is willing to field those questions. Any debate? Move, move the question. Board of Selectmen, uh, favorable 5-0. Finance Committee, favorable 4-0. Um, Community Preservation Committee, no vote. The first one? What? Yeah, we're just doing the first one. And this would just move in the uh, $15,500 right now. 
All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? No. Motion carries with minimal opposition. Sec second part of the motion. Thank you. The second project we've recommended is uh, for the, uh, the Bradford House. Move that the sum of $8,500 be appropriated from available Community Preservation Act Historic Preservation Funds for electrical and alarm improvements to the Major John Bradford Homestead as presented to town meeting and recommended by the Community Preservation Committee. Said project to be under the supervision of the Jones River Village Historical Society officers and directors with all expenses subject to final review and approval by the Community Preservation Committee prior to submittal for payment. And, thank you. Any discussion on this? Uh, Gene Landis now has agreed to field questions on it. What was the vote of the uh, Preservation Committee? I'm sorry, say what was the vote of the Preservation Committee? That was, uh, I'm not 100% sure on it. I know it was unanimous at the time. Uh, our secretary was going to look into that. It was either 5 or 6 to 0 at the time. Okay. I think Finance Committee wants to be heard on this one. Hi, I'm just here to point out the um, Finance Committee voted one yes, three no for this, and it was because we do not recommend it. Um, there's many questions about um, limited information resulting in unanswered questions. Um, and then some of the information in the book, we were unsure, it said um, the proposed work would replace the current wiring and installing additional three-prong outlets for the use with the recently completed introductory vid video. So we had. Okay. Ma'am? Yes, Jean Landis Nauman. I'm at 84 Wolf Pond Road. I'm vice president of the Jones River Village Historic Society. Uh, as we clearly explained at the joint meeting of the Selectmen and Finance Committee, the wiring in the Bradford House is many decades old and represents a substantial liability to this structure. We are proposing to replace the current wiring and install additional three prong outlets, not only for use with the introductory video, but many things that you plug in nowadays, including fans, require three prongs. The second item is for a barn alarm system. During the recent move of the town archives from the Kingston Public Library to the Adams Center, Jones River Village was asked to permanently remove all items belonging to the society from the library. These archives contain valuable historical and irreplaceable items primarily donated by residents of Kingston to our collection. They're now being stored in an unsecured barn on the Major John Bradford homestead. The third item is for a boathouse alarm system. As many of you recall, this town meeting prior years allocated substantial funds from the CPC to restore the Bac Lejeune. It's a historic cat boat given to the organization uh, it was built by George Schivert. It's currently in a boathouse that is unsecured. We're asking for funds to run electricity to the boathouse and install an alarm system. As you know, the Major John Bradford Homestead is one of the most historic sites in Kingston. The house, the site has been placed on both the state and national register of historic places. Not only is it open to the public, but each year all third grade students at KES are offered a tour of the house and property. As this house is one of the most significant historical buildings in Kingston, we are committed to maintaining and preserving all the possessions for our future generations. We ask the town meeting vote favorable action so that we can continue to preserve these, this house and artifacts. Thank you. Go down.
Paul Gallagher, 8 Longview Drive. I'm Tom Clark. Um, I've had a couple of people that were concerned about attending today and a, a question kept coming up. They just wanted to know if you could clarify, is this just for installation or are you going to be looking for monthly fees to cover the alarm system? cover the monthly fees. Yep, this good. is just the installation of a system which costs well over 2000 As you know, in this past year, our organization has not been able to uh, host any fundraising activities. So our funds are being drained every month for the essential expenses. And we wish we could cover the cost of this, but we cannot and we feel it's in the interest of all the residents in town to preserve not only the house, but all of the um, historic items that have been donated, as well as the restored cat boat. Thank you. If you can just come up to this uh, microphone here in case there's a follow-up question. I think there's someone behind you. Just come right here. Yes, sir. Daniel Harlow, 31 Hollins Lane. Um, in your presentation, you had mentioned that there was wiring that was several decades old. old. Uh, could you describe in more depth what several decade old wiring entails? I mean, I'm just asking because my house is more than several decades old. So I'm wondering if I need to start updating my electricity. If you know, ma'am. If you know. Okay. Lenny Warner, who's the town electrical inspector, told us that the wiring is from the 40s and the 50s, and it's the old knob wiring that could cause a fire at any time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a seat. All right. Seeing no further debate, um, as to this one, um, this is the sum of $8,500. Uh, Board of Selectmen, 410, Finance Committee. I'm sorry. Yes. Hi, Sue Munford, 299 Elm Street. I just wanted clarification. Is the um, Bradford House private property? Who's Jean? It's private property. Okay, thank you. The answer from Gene was, it is private property, yes. Back to um, the sum of $8,500 for improvements. Board of Selectmen, 410, favorable finance committee, uh, 130, not favorable. And the community preservation committee, it was favorable. We just don't know how favorable. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The majority vote carries. Article 5. Move that the town vote to transfer $158,791 from free cash to fund the agreement by and between the Town of Kingston and the International Association of Firefighters, Local 2337 for FY21 for the first year of a two-year contract. Fire Department, hold on a second. <laughs> Fire Department 001-220-51115. Fire union salaries, $109,890. Fire Department 001-220-51131 overtime, $31,028. Fire Department 001-220-51137 recall, $8,820. Fire Department 001-220 dash five one three seven sorry five one one three seven training eight thousand seven hundred and fifty nine dollars fire department zero zero one dash two two zero dash five one one five one sick buyback two hundred and ninety four dollars 
All right. So tonight we are asking you to approve the funding for the labor contract between the town and the firefighters union. A thorough market analysis was conducted to compare Kingston firefighters compensation to other towns within our region. And we found that our firefighters are substantially below market average. The agreement that we now have in place with the union works to correct this issue, enabling the town to recruit and retain firefighters in what at this time is a fiercely competitive market. Without compensating our firefighters at market rate or average, we risk losing them to fire departments paying higher wages, simply wasting money and time we spend training and equipping them. We ask for your support for what we believe is a fair agreement that benefits the town and our firefighters. Open for debate. If I could, I just want to, we don't know the uh, particular line item number at this point, but it, it says in the motion, uh, recall and trading are under the same line item, and they're not. So we, I just want to make sure that we reflect that we're going to take it out of the appropriate line items after the meeting. Thank you. Yes, sir. Daniel Harlow, 31 Howlands Lane. I don't know if this is the same question. I couldn't really hear it, and I'm trying to follow along, but what is the recall line? The, uh, like, what, what does that part pertain to? <laughs> We'd hear from him eventually. Chief? Good evening. Uh, recall is when we recall people off duty to respond to additional incidents. We use our five-person shift to respond to the incidents up to the level that they are able to, and then we page people, we use radio pages to recall them off duty. When we recall them off duty, obviously they're paid overtime to respond to the incident. So that is a, a specific recall line uh, for that purpose. It, it, so, it, I mean, is that the same as like being like an on-call firefighter? It's calling full-time firefighters back for responses, okay. for which they are compensated overtime. That is a specific line within our budget that we use uh, for that purpose. The reason it was inserted into our budget as recall is so we can accurately track that expense. So if, if they don't go home, it's overtime. If they go home and come back, it's recall? Correct. When they're off duty, we often run very deep in calls, three, four, and five deep. The on-duty shift is only able to handle usually two to possibly three, depending on the call. When that happens, we recall people. That's why we call it recall from off-duty to respond to those calls. For that, they are then paid overtime. That overtime comes out of this particular line item. And just one other question off of what Town Clerk was asking. What, what was he getting at with regard to the line items being separated or something like that after the meeting? Hey, sorry, it's, 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 it's tough it's, to hear, and then I'm also trying to read it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a super easy question. Our line items obviously are separated out with different titles and different numbers. Would they simply use the same line item number on the warrant uh, that they, for both items? That's all. They, that simply needs to be corrected. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other debate, this was Board of Selectmen, favorable 5-0, um, Finance Committee, favorable 4-0. This is a majority vote. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Article six. Um, move that the salaries for the elected officials be set as of July 1st, 2020 as follows. Uh, collector of 72,500 to 74,313 as recommended, um, an increase of $1,813. Treasurer, fiscal year 20 budget of 72,500. Fiscal year 21 recommended, 74,313, an increase of $1,813. Town clerk, fiscal year 20 budget, 20, 72,500. Fiscal 21 recommended. $74,313, an increase of $1,813 for a total increase of $5,438. And further, the sum of $5,438 to be transferred from free cash for said salaries 
and that the town accountant be authorized to allocate such sums to the appropriate operating budgets. Can, can I just make a friendly amendment? That's supposed to be $22,939 for the total and $5,439 for the um, elected officials' articles added up together, correct? Yes? Okay. The math was off by a dollar. Would anyone like to be heard on this? Um, the Board of Selectmen, I believe, recently voted this, and it's 400. Finance Committee 400. Seeing no debate, I'll move the question. This is a two thirds majority vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Congratulations. Motion carries. Article 8 is next. All right. I move that the sum of $170,913 be appropriated for the following equipment expenditures, and to meet this appropriation, the sum of $170,913 be transferred from free cash to, the, to be under the supervision of the departments or organizations and for the purpose, purposes and in the amounts as follows. Project 1, assessors, revaluation $46,300. Project 2, Conservation Stormwater Permit, $75,000. Project 3, Police Department Replace Firearms, $7,000. Project 4, Schools Study of Fire Suppression System at KES, $15,000. Project 5, Schools Repair Bathroom Fixtures at KES, $1,218. Project 6, Conservation Planning Plotter Scanner, $7,395. Project 7, Schools Technology for KES and KIS, $11,500. Project 8, Schools Upgrade MDF Closet to Emergency Power for KES and KIS, $7,500. Um, all the details on this is in the supplemental documentation, uh, and if there's any questions, I ask that the department come up. Open for debate. Seeing none, I'll move the question. It's a majority vote, and it's favorable um, Board of Selectmen on all items uh, one through eight, five zero. Favorable on by the Finance Committee on all items one through eight, four zero. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed. Motion carries with minimal opposition. Let's talk fire trucks. Okay. Hey, Bob. So, um, move the that the town authorize under general law chapter 44 section 21c upon the recommendation of the board of selectmen a lease purchase financing agreement for the acquisition of a ladder truck equipment that may be acquired through the issuance of debt under glc 44 the term of such agreement not to exceed seven years the useful life of the equipment as determined by the board of selectmen and the fire department shall be authorized to enter into such agreement on behalf of the town in the amount of $1,300,000 uh, with an appropriation to fund said agreement to be completed at a subsequent town meeting. So um, this is the lease of the fire truck. There is um, uh, information on the supplemental. Um, I thought the fire did a great job of um, answering questions. Um, and I don't know if the fire chief would like to come and say some words. Good evening. Tonight we present a request to replace one of the most important pieces of equipment owned by the fire department. 
As early as 1941, our predecessors saw the need for a ladder truck to help provide fire protection and rescue services for the town of Kingston. That year, the town purchased its first ladder truck, which carried only a large complement of ground ladders. In 1969, the 1941 ladder truck was replaced. The town purchased an apparatus with a 75-foot hydraulic area ladder, pump, and a water tank. Fast forward to 1984. In 1984, the town replaced its 1967 ladder truck with another apparatus with a 75-foot ladder, pump, and tank. The town's population in 1994 was 9,907. The town had expanded with shopping centers, a regional mall, residential expansion out to the Carver, Plimpton, and Pembroke borders, and Rocky Nook was transitioning from a summer colony to a full-time residential community of over 400 homes. Tonight, you're being asked to replace the 1994 ladder truck. The need for this ladder truck today is every bit as important as it was in 1941, 1967, and 1994. Today, our population has risen to 14,000 people, nearly six times that of 1941. Rocky Nook is now a full-time community of over 400 homes, many built on small lots with mineral separation and reaching 35 feet in height. And many of our older colonial homes, as you well know, our Main Street homes, have been converted into apartments, creating yet an additional hazard for the fire service. Commercial and residential developments are now allowed to reach 60 feet in height. El Knife has expanded their facility over three, to over three times its original size, with Amazon and future commercial and residential development being equally as large. All of these factors present many new challenges for us, including the rescue of occupants, in the event of a fire. What has changed in building construction certainly includes, but is not limited to Kingston. Many new buildings are being built using truss-type construction where there is no ridge board and the trusses are held together with lightweight metal plates that fail with heat, causing collapse. More laminated materials, basically sawdust with glue, are being used in all types of construction for not only sheathing, but support structures as well. As a result of these materials, and the increased use of plastics, fires are burning hotter and faster, and newer structures run a higher risk of failure early in the fire. Operations such as ventilation, which we previously did standing on a roof with a roof ladder off of our existing aerial ladder, require us now to cut a hole in the end of the building to maintain the safety of our crews, a term we call gable venting. In addition to the changes in material, many of our single family homes are being built further from the street and have driveways configured in such a way that makes a longer aerial device more desirable and more efficient. In those hundreds of homes that were built between 1960 and 70 are now 50 years old. The truck. In September of 2020, the 1994 ladder truck was taken out of service, a period of failures which rendered the truck unsafe and re unreliable ran about 18 months before that. For those interested in the mileage in hours, 71,876 miles on the current vehicle, 6,454 hours, and its usage, about 121 calls per year. That number was averaged over a five-year span. As we have summarized in the supplemental documentation, the current apparatus has deficiencies in many areas, including chassis frame, engine, transmission, pump, electrical, and aerial device systems. Over the past 18 months or so, we have spent nearly $35,000 on repairs. The truck was out of service 92 days and was towed from either scenes or simple driving down the road three times. To repair just the deficiencies we know about would require an enormous investment while leaving the truck still with a frame that cannot be repaired. The local dealer who would profit from doing the repairs discouraged the investment. Over the past two years, we have done a thorough assessment of our needs as well as looked at the options available to us. The assessment included, but was not limited to, review of current and future building trends, including construction types, size, and location, expected staffing, in other words, how many people would be available to operate the truck, style of available apparatus, apparatus available to be purchased, both new and used, and delivery times, which currently run about 12 months for new apparatus. We propose to replace our current apparatus with a new 100-foot ladder tower with a pump and water tank. This unit has a 25-foot longer aerial ladder, 
with a bucket and numerous corrosion-resistant components, including frame and aerial substructure. This style aerial provides adequate reach, a safe working environment, and a stable platform for fire and rescue operations, such as gable venting, which I spoke of earlier. It is also capable of delivering water in high volume with minimal reliance on personnel and has the capacity and capability of being operated below grade. We are often asked, why do we need a ladder so long? We don't have buildings that high, do we? In suburban and rural communities, aerial ladders are often used at lower angles for reach as well as height. As opposed to ground ladders, they provide a safe and more stable platform to perform a multitude of required tasks on the fire ground, including rescue and ventilation. Other towns that have moved to the aerial platform or towel ladder type aerial device in our region, Abington, Avon, Bridgewater, the city of Brockton, East Bridgewater, Halifax, Hanson, Middleborough, Plymouth, Rainham, and several Cape communities. The cost of this apparatus is $1.3 million. It will be done through lease purchase. $250,000 will come from the Amazon project, $150,000 from the Trammell Crow project, that's the apartments at the mall, and $900,000 from the town over a seven year period, beginning at the delivery date. Mr. Pike and Ms. McCoy, our financial folks, were extremely helpful in preparing this presentation specifically the financial documents. I would ask that if you have any questions, we direct those on the financing, that we please direct those to those uh, folks. In closing, hopefully this presentation, along with the supplemental documentation, has provided you with enough information to make a positive, well-informed decision. It would be my pleasure through the moderator, of course, to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Hello. Just, just to be clear on this, the, this is just to enter the lease. The funding will come at the annual town meeting in the spring? Correct. This article asks that you sign the lease agreement for the vehicle. The first payment or the funding would begin at delivery time, which would be a year from now, expected to be December of 2021. So you would be looking for the lease payment to be appropriated at Springtown meeting. Thank you. Um, Mark, a, a great presentation. Just a question, and maybe Carl has to answer this, but um, the last sentence on the motion ends with to be completed at a subsequent town meeting. What if we don't? What happens? Town, town Council. So, can you hear me? So under um, the lease purchase uh, agreement laws and the IGR guidance that come, uh, that the DOR provides to discuss what the, pardon? Oh, is that better? Um, essentially, the town is not bound to the seven year commitment without the appropriation. So the second step, it's like a two prong approach, like you would for a debt exclusion. So think you get a town meeting vote, and then you do an override vote, right, that's done at the election. So this process is sort of similar. It takes two prongs. So this vote here is a two-thirds majority vote, and it allows the, the town to enter into the lease agreement, but the town only becomes bound to that seven-year um, term for, for payments once the first appropriation is made. Once that first appropriation is made, all subsequent years must be appropriated for, or they have to find the money somewhere else in the budget, but you're bound to continue to pay that agreement until it's paid up in full. Good? Yes, sir. Daniel Harlow, 31 Howlands Lane. Following along those same lines, with regard to um, the $400,000 between Amazon and, I forget the other name, the other project. Um, so on the supplemental packet, it says that Amazon's supposed to be getting theirs on 7121, so next July, and Trammell Crow is receiving their grant 7121. Are those guaranteed grants at this point? 
that a board of selectmen? Amounts of money that come from both Trammell Crow as well as Amazon are tied to their occupancy permits. So when each of those buildings is occupied, the uh, developer is obliged to or obligated to give us that amount of money. That, I believe, was conditions set uh, which they signed, and I can't remember by whether it's ZBA or planning. Um, perhaps Rob could answer that, uh, or Kyle could. But those, both of those are tied to their occupancy permits. So just a follow-up on, on that. Um, so, if, for example, if, if just for clarification, just so I'm, I'm clear on it, if the Tremel Pro doesn't come to fruition, there will be no grant money on that. Is, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. But I, I will add this to that. Uh, most recently, we did the plan review for Trammell Crow uh, and charged them $14,000 for that plan review. So I would suggest to you, uh, given the information that Trammell as well as um, Kingston Collection has provided us, that that, um, that project will come to fruition and is well underway. That's it. Thank you very much. Any further debate? Okay. Oh, sorry. Did someone say something? Uh, sorry. We're all set. I can't hear her. She's saying we need to Oh, yes, yes, I am moving the question. Thank you. Um, just get the, uh, that was fine. Uh, Board of Selectmen, favorable um, 5 0, Finance Committee, favorable 4 0, Capital Planning Committee, 4 0. This is a two-third vote. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, before, before we move on, um, I, I'd just like to take a second to thank, and if I get your name wrong, I apologize, um, Catherine Zielinski and Mona Leviton. Uh, they're doing the amazing screen work that everyone's reading from and I've heard from the clerk that they're always accommodating so I'd just like to take a moment and say thank you for being here and helping us. So this is kind of a consent agenda. Um, Articles 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 are not being moved. So I'd like to ha have someone make a motion to indefinitely postpone Articles 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Do I have a second? Hold on, let's get, we need names on this if we could. I, I heard Andy second. Because he always does. Who's this so moved? Name over here? I can't see who that is. Name? Oh, there he is, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of, uh, all those in favor of <laughs> indefinitely postponing Articles 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, say aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Article 17. Are you moving it? No, that's fine. Hi, Joanne Cullen, Planning Board Clerk, One Sunset Road. I moved, um, this is worded a little bit differently than in your package. Um, we've made an amendment. Move that the town vote to accept the roads known as Mulberry Drive, part of Wolf Pond Road, Round Hill Road, Continental Court, and Autumn Lane. All is shown on the plan entitled As Built Road Plan, Mulberry Drive, and Wolf Pond Road, from High Pines Drive to Station 4, Wolf Pond Road. Village at Russell Pond, Kingston, Mass., stated February 15, 1998, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept a gift of easement or fee simple ownership of the land identified in the plan and accompanying materials. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. Daniel Harlow, 31 Howlands Lane. 
maybe I missed this, I, I showed up late. Um, articles 10 and 11. Oh, they already they were already done. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Did, did the board of selectmen vote this? I'm going to take one second. I think the board of selectmen is going to vote this. debate, I, I'm sorry, I'm backtracked. Any debate on 17? Okay. Board of Selectmen, Fable, I'll move the question. Board of Selectmen, Fable, 5-0. 4-0. 4-0, I'm sorry. Planning Board, Fable, 4-0. Did finance? Did, did they not? No, they're not. They don't okay. All those, this is a majority? Majority. Majority vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 18, please. Okay. Move that the town vote to accept the roads known as Fountain Knoll Lane, Bogview Road, Smith Fuller Way, and Crimson Harvest Drives, all as shown on the plan entitled Tall Timbers Estate Phase 5, excuse me, Phase 4, Planned Residential Development in Kingston, Mass., dated January 8, 2007 as revised and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept as a gift of, gift of easement or fee simple ownership of the land identified in the plans and accompanying materials. Open for debate. I see no debate. Okay. Board of Selectmen, favorable, 4-0. Planning Board, favorable, 5-0. I'll move the question for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I have another motion. Anything else? Anything else for you? No. I have a motion to dissolve town meeting. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, folks. Thank you.